this problem is a classic problem in um, this physics course. And we are going to solve it using conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. What we have here is a ballistic pendulum. And a ballistic pendulum is a device that's used to measure the speed of fast moving projectiles like bullets. So the bullet is fired into a large block of wood that's suspended from wires here. And the bullet is stopped by the block. So there's a collision between the bullet and the block, an inelastic collision, okay? And then um, the entire system here, the bullet plus the block, is gonna swing up to some final height here, okay, given by H after the collision. And so we have the mass of the bullet is five grams. The mass of our pendulum, this block of wood here, is one kilogram. And after the collision, that block swings up a height of five centimeters from its original height, okay? And so our experiment, or our problem here, is to find the initial velocity of our bullet. Okay, all we know is the mass of the bullet, the mass of the block, and how high up does that block swing after the collision. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use conservation of momentum and conservation of energy in order to solve this problem. Okay, so first let's start with our conservation of momentum. Okay, so I'm just gonna call this P here. P conservation, P cons, okay? So we're gonna look at the conservation of momentum right before and immediately after the collision, okay? Just this part right here, right before and immediately after the collision. So for our conservation of momentum, we've got the sum of all of our initial momentums has to equal the sum of all of our final momentum after this initial collision, okay? So we've got M1, V1 initial, I'm calling M1 my bullet here, plus M2, V2 initial equals, after the collision, those two objects are, are now one object. This is our inelastic collision. They smush together, they move as one, and so our mass is M1 plus M2 now times V final, okay? And this is before and after our initial collision here, okay? So we don't know two things in this problem. First, so oh, let's, let's first take care of this. Um, our block, our pendulum here is initially at rest, so its initial momentum is zero. So then we have M1 V1 initial equals M1 plus M2 V final. Okay, so we are trying to solve this problem for our initial velocity of our bullet, but we don't know yet what this final velocity of our block plus plus bullet system is immediately after that collision. We don't know this V final yet, okay? So what we have to do now is another step. We have to do a conservation of energy step in order to get what this velocity was immediately after that collision, then we plug it in up here, and then we can find our initial velocity. Actually, let's go ahead and solve this equation for our initial velocity here. So if we do that, the initial velocity of our bullet is equal to m1 plus m2 v final all over m1. So we have to get this v final. And um, we'll do that through conservation of energy. E cons. <laughs> okay, so now for conservation of energy, we are going to think about conservation of energy immediately after the collision to when the pendulum plus the bullet reach their final height. So for conservation of energy, we've got immediately after the collision to when we swing up to our final height right here, okay? So for that step, that part of the problem, our conservation of energy, we have the initial kinetic energy of our pendulum system plus the initial potential energy of our pendulum system equals the final kinetic energy of the system plus the final potential energy of this system, okay? so. When we're here, we have some initial kinetic energy, okay? We're, there's a speed 
from conservation from from our conservation of momentum from the collision that the bullet plus block will have after that collision. So our initial kinetic energy here after the collision is going to be non-zero, but our initial potential energy is going to be zero. Our initial potential energy is zero here immediately after the collision. Then when we swing up to our final height before we swing back down, when we reach that maximum height after the collision, we have converted all of our kinetic energy into potential energy. So at this point right here, where we reach our maximum height relative to where we started, okay, we have all potential energy and no kinetic energy. So this final kinetic energy is zero. So then we have one half m1 plus m2 times v initial squared equals m1 plus m2 gh. Kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Potential energy from gravitational potential energy is mass times gravity times your height above some place where you say h is equal to zero. Okay, so in this one we see both sides has, ha, have m1 plus m2. So we could divide both sides by m1 plus m2. Okay, that goes away. So we know the height, we know g. We can solve this equation for the initial velocity of our system immediately after the collision. That's the initial velocity that we have right here immediately after the collision. And uh, then we've got v1 initial squared, or just we'll just call it v initial squared, okay? equals 2gh. So v initial equals the square root of 2gh. So this initial velocity, again, is the velocity that um, the block plus bullet have after this collision. So what we're calling vi here is the same thing as v final up here from our conservation of momentum, because we did conservation of momentum um, immediately before and immediately after the collision. Okay, we needed that velocity immediately after the collision, which we got from our conservation of energy by thinking about the kinetic energy here immediately after the collision to converting all of that to potential energy uh, when we reach the final height up here. Okay, so then we could take the square root of 2gh that would give us this velocity that we need in this equation here, okay? So then, let's just rewrite this equation. Our initial velocity for um, then our, um, our initial velocity for our bullet is going to be equal to m1 plus m2, and we found the expression for this v here, the square root of 2gh, and then we divide it by m1. Okay, so now we found this nice expression for our ballistic pendulum for how we can get at this um, velocity right here, okay? The initial velocity of our bullet using both conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. So if I plug in these values here, then I've got m1 plus m2 is 1.005 kilograms times square root of two times 9.8 meters, meters per second squared, this is a multiplication, times our initial height was five centimeters, so that's 0 0.05 meters, and we're dividing by the, by, that by the uh, mass of our bullet, which is 0 0.005 kilograms. So then we find that the initial velocity of our bullet was 199 meters per second, okay? So, uh, you know, I like to solve my equations with variables, so that's what I did here, okay? But when you're over here finding your conservation, your um, velocity for conservation of energy that our block plus bullet system has immediately after the collision, you could just go ahead and get this numerical value. So the square root of two times 9.8 meters per second squared times 0 0.05 meters, okay? That number is 0 0.999 meters per second, okay? So then I can take that quantity and put it in, in this equation up here too. So, you know, 
not everybody's comfortable with um, finding the algebraic expression all the time first before plugging in your values. So that's okay if you're over here, if you wanted to go ahead and find that value for the velocity of our block plus bullet immediately after the collision. And then you could um, use that quantity here and plug it in up in this equation. Um, but I like to go ahead and just solve it um, outright with all my variables if I can, if it makes sense. Remember that momentum is a vector. So we're still going to have conservation of momentum, even if we have a collision that's happening in a two dimensional space. Now, because momentum, again, is a vector, we have to solve our conservation of momentum equation separately in the x dimension and separately in the y dimension, just like we thought about forces separately in the x and the y direction for Newton's second law. We thought about vectors separately in the x and y direction. We're also going to think about conservation of momentum by solving our conservation of momentum equations in both the x and the y direction and combining those in the end in order to get our either momentum vector or our velocity vector for the quantities that we're solving for. So we are going to do an example problem, again, a car crash, but this time in a two-dimensional space. We have a car with mass of 1,500 kilograms, and it's traveling east at a speed of 25 meters per second, so to the positive x direction. Okay, And it's going to collide at an intersection with another car that has a mass of 2,500 kilograms that's traveling due north, so up along the positive y-axis at a speed of 20 meters per second. So they're going to collide. It's going to be an inelastic collision because they're going to stick together after and move as one object. We're going to find the magnitude and direction of the velocity of this wreckage after the collision, and we're going to assume that we have the perfectly inelastic collision so they stick together. And we're going to avoid or not think about any friction between the road and the objects. Okay. And then for part B, we're going to find the energy lost in the collision. Okay. E lost. Question mark. Okay. So <laughs> first, because this is a collision in two dimensions, we have to solve our conservation of momentum in both the x direction and the y direction. So to get our final velocity vector, we have to get the velocity vector from our collision, conservation of momentum in the x direction, and then the velocity vector in the y direction after the collision. Okay, so let's start by looking at our conservation of momentum equation in the x direction, in the horizontal direction. Okay, so then we have m1v1 initial in the x plus m2v2 initial in the x equals m1 plus m2, because they collide together, v final in the x direction. Okay, so let's see. Remember, this is just the x component. So um, our second car is only traveling in the vertical direction, so its x component is zero. So it has no velocity in the x direction to start with, okay? But our first car has only velocity in the x direction and no velocity in the y direction. So all of this 25 meters per second is in the x direction for this first car for its initial velocity. So we solve this for the final velocity in the x direction, divide both sides by m1 plus m2, v final in the x direction equals m1 v1 initial in the x all over m1 plus m2, okay? So that will equal, we've got 150 kilograms times the initial velocity of our first car, 25 meters per second, divide by the mass, some of the masses, 1,500 1, kilograms plus 2,500 kilograms, and then the final velocity in the x direction is 9.38 meters per second. Okay, now we have to do the exact same thing for our collision in the y dimension. So, for y, we've got m1v1 initial in the y plus m2v2 initial in the y. 
equals, now they're smushed together as one object after the collision, m1 plus m2 times v final in the y direction. So for the vertical direction and the y direction, our first car only has velocity in the x, no velocity in the y. So, or at least to start with, no initial velocity in the y direction. Okay, so that quantity is non-zero, or is zero, that quantity is zero. But our velocity for our second car is only along the vertical direction. So V2 initial in the vertical direction is non-zero, and it's this full two meter, tw or it's this full 20 meters per second, okay? So we solve this equation for V final Y. V final Y equals M2 V2 initial in the Y all over M1 plus M2. So that's 2,500 kilograms times our initial velocity in the Y direction, which is all vertically here. That's our 20 meters per second. And then we divide it by the sum of the masses, 2,500 kilograms plus 1,500 kilograms. And that gives us a velocity in, a final velocity in the Y direction of 12.5 meters per second. Okay, so if I come over here, here I've got my little drawing of what my collision of my two cars looks like after they've um, you know, smushed into each other. Okay, so they're gonna have a velocity off in the direction um, somewhere over here <laughs> that has a component in the x component of 9.38 meters per second and has a y component of 12.5 meters per second. So if I look at this, let's say from this point right here uh, where those two cars are intersecting, um, our velocity is um, 12, uh, sorry, 9.38 meters per second in the x direction and it's 12.5 meters per second in the y direction, then our velocity vector for the final velocity of our wreckage after the collision is going to be off, pointing off in this direction. We found the x and the y components of that velocity, so this vector that I just drew in here, that's our final velocity vector, okay? We have to get its magnitude and its angle with respect to the positive x-axis. Okay, so we're gonna look for that angle theta too. And we've gotta find the magnitude. So, if you remember when we were talking about vectors, to get the magnitude of this velocity vector, we have to think about the Pythagorean theorem, right? So this side here was our x component of the final velocity. This side here was the y component of our final velocity. And then the magnitude we're looking for is the hypotenuse of that triangle, okay? So if you think a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse of our triangle, a and b are the legs. So then we have, um, let's see, so then we have v final x squared plus v final y squared equals v final squared. Okay, the magnitude of the um, final velocity is gonna be the hypotenuse of this little right angle triangle that we have with uh, x component that we found here and the y component that we found here. So take the square root of both sides, v final, the magnitude of our final velocity is gonna be equal to the square root of the x component of our final velocity plus the y component of our final velocity squared. We have to square of both of those quantities, okay? So then this is gonna equal the square root of 9.38 meters per second squared plus 12.5 meters per second squared, okay? And if we perform that calculation, we find that our final velocity is 15.6 meters per second. That's the magnitude. And now we have to find the angle, okay? So we come back over here and look at our triangle. We've got our angle theta here. We know the hypotenuse of our triangle now, but we also know our legs x and y. So if we want to find this angle here from the positive x-axis, we can use tangent because we know, um, we know opposite side and we know adjacent side. So tangent 
of theta equals the opposite side, which is our v final y, over our adjacent side, which was v final x. So theta is the inverse tangent of v final y over v final x, okay? So that's the inverse tangent of 12.5 meters per second over 9.38 meters per second. So this angle is 53.1 degrees from the positive x-axis. So our final velocity after the collision has a magnitude of 15.6 meters per second at an angle of 53.1 degrees from our positive x-axis, okay? And then we need to find the energy lost in our system, okay? So to find the energy lost in the system, energy lost is different from the change in kinetic energy. Remember that energy lost is your initial kinetic energy minus your final kinetic energy, okay? But your change in kinetic energy is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, okay? The magnitudes of those will be the same. It's just that um, one of them will be positive and one of them will be negative, okay? If we're looking for the energy lost, our initial kinetic energy if we have an, inel an inelastic collision, our initial kinetic energy is always going to be greater than our final kinetic energy because we lose energy through the collision. So energy lost will always be a positive number because initial kinetic energy will always be greater than final kinetic energy. But your change in kinetic energy will always be negative because the initial kinetic energy is bigger than our final kinetic energy, okay? So they're different by a minus sign. Remember, energy is not a vector, it is just it's what we call a scalar. It's just a size. It's a quantity, but it doesn't have a direction, okay? So we still have to figure out this energy <laughs> lost. And um, I'm losing space here, okay? But let us do that just in this little box right here. My uh, space on my board that's left over. It takes a long time to erase these boards because this is wet paint and I have to erase it and then let it dry. So it's just easier if I just fill in everything before I have to stop and erase. So we're just gonna use this corner here to find our ener kinetic energy lost. So I'm just gonna go ahead and find the initial kinetic energy of our system. And so the initial kinetic energy of our system is gonna be one half M1 V1 initial squared plus one half m2 v2 initial squared. Okay, doesn't care about direction. So this is one half times our 1500 kilograms for mass one times its initial velocity of 25 meters per second squared plus one half m2 is 2500 kilograms times its initial velocity 20 meters per second, don't forget to square. So our initial kinetic energy is 9.69 times 10 to the five joules, okay? Our final kinetic energy is gonna be one half times M1 plus M2 times V final squared, okay? So that's equal to one half times 1,500 kilograms plus 2,500 kilograms times the final, our 15.6 meters per second squared. So that number is 4.87 times 10 to the five joules, okay? So if I take my initial kinetic energy, subtract it from my final kinetic energy, that will give me my energy lost. So in this problem, my energy lost is equal to 4.82 times 10 to the five joules, okay. So what does that even mean? How does that compare? So to figure out like, how much energy do we lose compared to our initial energy, you'd wanna take this number and divide it by 
our initial kinetic energy. And whenever you do that, we find that in this problem, we actually lost about 50% of our initial energy through this collision. So we are, in fact, having an inelastic collision. Momentum is conserved, but energy is not.